All right, so this is the lathe located in the back of the shop. Uh, what you're going to use this tool for is if you've got some sort of a cylindrical piece, and what you're going to do is you can remove outer diameter or create a new inner diameter. Um, you can uh, drill or chip off the outer diameter. The size of pieces you'll be able to make with this is about a five and a half inch uh, outer diameter piece, and the max length you can make it is just over a foot. So just a basic uh, introduction to all the pieces of the lathe. Uh, starting with the farthest left, you've got the collet release lever. Uh, up here, you've got a screen that tells you the X and Y locations of your tool. Uh, right here, you have speed controls for the spindle. Uh, the on and off switch down here. There's a hard brake for the spindle right here that you can engage. Your tool goes right here. This is where also the collets or the chuck will go to hold your, uh, the, the part that you're machining. You've got the tool post right here, where you'll put your different tools. Uh, the Y control and the X control for the tool post. You've got the tailstock here, which you can put a drill bit on. Uh, and down here we have the carriage feed uh, controls. Okay, right, so this panel here is for the spindle controls. Uh, the three main parts to be concerned about are the slower, uh, faster spindle speed buttons, as well as the brake. Uh, when the spindle is not spinning, enable the brake. What happens is then you cannot manually turn the spindle by hand. Uh, when you start the spindle, you want to turn the brake off. This will allow you to start the spindle. In order to increase the speed of the spindle, push the faster button on top. To decrease the speed, push the slower button. You can see the high and low speeds of the spindle based on this meter on the right. All right, so here's the display for your uh part gives you X and Y coordinates. The only buttons we're really concerned with are these ones right here, this radius diameter button, and the millimeter and inches button. Um, we don't really use any of the other ones, more advanced features, not really necessary. So your X goes along your part here, and here is your zero button. So you press that, and it zeroes it. And there's a plus and a minus direction. We'll show those directions a little later. Uh, and the same thing, the Y. Right there, press that and zeroes it. There's an in and out. Out is uh, positive apparently, and in is minus. So, uh, and the other button we're interested in is the radius diameter button, which is only important for the y direction, which is into your part. You press that, and basically it halves it, and that's for radius. And then diameter doubles it. That's about it. Okay, so before we use the lathe, we'll talk to you a little about safety. That's the, the foremost thing. Uh, first of all, like most tools in this lab, in fact, pretty much every tool in this lab, wear some safety glasses. You don't want any uh, chips flying off and, and hitting you right in the eyes. That'd be bad. Um, uh, long hair. Uh, if you're like a girl with long hair or like a hippie, um, tie it back or wear a hat or something. Um, fortunately, Josh gave me a haircut before uh, doing these videos. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so uh, I don't really need my hat anymore. I'm going to wear it anyways for good luck. So. When you've got loose clothing also, don't, don't wear like a sweatshirt or something like that. Um, you don't want any loose clothing that could be caught. Uh, when you're cutting your tool, you want to use lubricant for aluminum. Uh, find the bottles with the blue uh, handle around them. Or uh, for steel, you want to use the red ones. In terms of the part, after cutting and during cutting, don't touch it because it'll be hot. Uh, any chips that fall off, don't touch that immediately when the tool is running either or a drill bit, or even the tool. Uh, all of those get very hot during operation. All right, so one last feature I want to talk about before we get started um, machining the part is the carriage feed. Basically what that is, is it's this motor right here, which will control both your X and Y axes, um, both individually and at the same time if you really wanted to. Um, so a couple, couple uh, parts to use here. There are some levers here which activate it. Um, they don't turn it on, per se, but they uh, activate the axis that you want to use. And uh, this one right here, the one on your left, is for your X axis. Up is on. And you can see now the wheel does not turn here because uh, it's controlled by the motor. And this one is for your Y axis. Again, the wheel doesn't turn because it's controlled by the motor. And you can, potentially if you wanted to, have both on at the same time and now they're both controlled by the same motor. Um, now the control box for the whole setup is over here. Um, here's your speed control right here from zero, which is not actually zero. 
it'll still move to whatever 100 is. I don't know what exactly that computes to, but um, it's pretty fast. Uh, and then here is your direction, left and right. And uh, left should move you left in this direction, and right move you in this direction. Uh, and that's about it for the basics of this machine. So we'll go ahead and show you how to do some of this stuff by machining something. All right, so this is the piece that we'll be machining. Uh, one way to hold your piece inside the lathe is by using a collet. Uh, if you can use a collet, then you should. The located on the bottom right of the machine down here. Um, what you want to do is you put your piece into the collet until you find one where it fits loosely. So this one's the one we'll be using for this part. Uh, it slides in nicely and it's a little bit loose. The collets range from 1 64th inch to an inch, so if you need to use more than an inch uh, diameter piece, then you'll need to use a chuck. All right, so uh, now that you've selected your collet, uh, we're going to install it into the lathe. Uh, the first thing to do is, inside the lathe, you want to you know, clear out any debris, so you'll take the, the air blower and just you know, clear that out. <clears throat> the next part, just take your finger and make sure there's no debris in here. Uh, make sure there's nothing on the, the collet either. Um, now when you want to put it into the lathe, there's a keyway, a slot right here on the collet. You don't want to, inside the lathe, you can kind of feel where that will That'll line up. You want to take your collet and put it in the lathe. <clears throat> okay, so now that we've inserted the collet, we'll just put our piece into the machine. Uh, just slide it right into the front. So now what we're going to do is we're going to lock the collet into place. The, the two things we have to, to focus on are the collet release lever right here and uh, this black wheel with a, a thumb lever on it. What you want to do is you want to keep the collet release lever to the right and twist this towards you. This will start to thread on the collet, just start to tighten it down. Eventually, uh, you'll pull this to the left to lock the collet in place. As you can see right now, there's no resistance, so you need to continue tightening it. Now you can feel that it kind of popped into place pretty easily. That means it's sufficiently uh, locked. If you keep twisting it more, You'll have to force it, and you really shouldn't force this ever. Um, so instead, we'll just go back. That works just fine. So what we'll do now is there's the thumb lever that I showed you earlier. We'll lock that in place, and now the part should be secured. Uh, so to take out the collet and remove your piece, you just take the collet release lever and push it back to the right. This will make your piece slide out just nicely. To take the collet out, uh, undo the, the thumb release lever, Turn it away from you. You should start unthreading the collet from the lathe, and eventually you should be able to just pull your collet right back out and put it away. All right. So if your piece is a little bit bigger than an inch, like this piece, uh, what we're going to have to use is a chuck to do that. This big, huge metal piece here, and basically we have two ways to clamp it. Uh, this is set up for an outside diameter clamp. If you flip these around, which you can't actually do, you have to use uh, some other ones. You can clamp from the inside, and we'll show how to change that a little later. All right, so before we install this, what we've got to do is we've got to get this in the right position so that we can see exactly where to put the chuck. So first step, go ahead and turn the brake off. And then now you can rotate the spindle until we see this little uh, T-shaped thing here, which is where we are going to be installing the chuck. And right here, there's a lock. And what you do is just kind of rotate this around while applying some pressure in. And there we go. Now it's locked. Now it's ready for us to install the chuck. All right. So just a little close-up on uh, that T-shaped thing I was talking about earlier. And what we've got here is we've got our chuck. And you can see this little, little nubby thing here. Basically, that's going to go right inside here and then up into this spot because the uh, spindle rotates in this direction. Um, so what we're going to do just going to line those up after cleaning this off, of course. I bet I already did that, so go ahead and put that on there. And then, now this is the important part. You want to twist it away from you because the spindle spins toward you. You don't want, you want it to tighten as you uh, work your piece and not un untighten. Otherwise, you're going to hurt yourself. So you just kind of get on there snug by hand for now. And then, what you do is you take your 
rubber mallet here. You never want to use a, a metal hammer for something like this. Set that right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just untighten that and then we got to lock it back in place again. All right. We take our key here, insert it in. Um, actually, I'm going to take it a little further back. You can always remember you want to hammer it away from you, not towards you, if that remembers or keeps your memory better or anything. But So we're just going to hit this like three or four times, nice sharp hits. And uh, now, as, lo as long as uh, you did that right, the piece is going to be on there. It's not going to come off. You can go ahead and release the, the uh, lock there. It spins freely, right? So, in order to clamp your piece on now, use these same little um, keyholes here. Go ahead and open it up. And take your piece. Now these tighten down, tighten down in the order. I don't know if you can see on here, but there are numbers on each of these. There's a three on that one. There's a two on that one. There's a one on that one, and that's the order they tighten down um, in. But that's I mean, not really that important for right now. Did you get it in there? Make sure it's straight. You tighten it down. Get it nice and snug. So you don't want that piece flying out. Now you should be ready. Let's go ahead and machine your piece. All right. So now, once you got your piece done, um, go ahead and take it out without making it fall. There we go. And there it goes. Okay. Um, now, what we want to do is we want to take this off. It's basically the uh, exact same procedure as putting it on. Go ahead and. Lock the spindle here. There we go. Put the key in. Go ahead and strike a few times with the hammer. And there it came loose. You just gotta kinda move it around a bit until you get it out of there. And uh, that's how you install and remove the chuck. Alright, so as promised, I'm gonna show you how to change the jaws on the chuck here. Um, notice these are the outside clamp ones and what I've done is I've just uh, undid them until they are loose and they come out so go ahead and pull them all out and again note that they are labeled by their numbers two was in the two three was in the three so I'll just set these aside what we're gonna do is we're gonna change it to a inside diameter clamp one um, there's the three there's the one and uh, oh. There's the two. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, the first one. So, I set those aside real quick. I don't want to mix these up. Um, you want to make sure that these are nice and clean. You don't want uh, metal shavings and such in there. So, they'll only go in one way. So, what you need to do first is spin the, uh, the key here counterclockwise. I'm not really using the key, I'm just using this kind of ghetto I know. Um, so you want to keep spinning it. You can see the threads moving. And the outermost one is eventually going to disappear. There we go. That's exactly what we're looking for. So then, go ahead and put number one in. And, if we did it right, oh, not quite. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. Keep spinning clockwise until you see the on uh, number two. There's the beginning thread, so you want to turn back just a little bit. Put number two in. Make sure you keep pressure on that. You don't want it to. There we go. And then we're going to do the same thing with number three. We wait for that thread to, to disappear. Oh, there it is. Put that in there. There we have it. All three of them are in there and ready to go. You can tighten it down to fit your piece. And then, I guess, obviously, if you're using a uh, uh, outside clamp, you tighten this all the way in, put your piece on there, and then tighten it back out to snug it down. And that's how you change the jaws on the truck. All right, so I just want to go over a couple details on the uh, tailstock here. Um, basically, 
you can put, I guess, a whole array of various things in the tail stack, but really, you're only going to use drill bits. So, um, this is a keyless chuck to hold your drill bits. It's basically, get your drill bit in there, you give it a snug turn, and that's it. You're done. So, a couple more notes here. Um, there are inch and um, it looks like one, two, three, four, five. Um, tenth of an inch increments on here, or is it one, two, three, four? No, I guess it's eighth inch increments on the uh, actual stock here. Um, over here on the wheel, these go in tenths of an inch. One full revolution is a tenth of an inch. So don't get that confused and mixed up with these. Um, that can really mess you up. Uh, on the back side here, there is a lever that locks it. You pull the lever up, that locks it, keeps it from moving. Put the lever down, and you can somewhat freely slide it back and forth. All right. Um, one kind of important thing is when you go to bring the uh, drill head in here, if you bring it in too far, what that basically does is it kicks this out. Um, and the way you put that back in is you make sure that these are nice and clean, and there's nothing in there. Put this in there, and again, make sure that this is sticking out some, otherwise it's not going to stay in. Put that in there, and then you uh, take a mallet and just give it a couple nice whacks, uh, and that's how you put that back in. Uh, and obviously, you can change depending on what exactly you're doing. You can change the uh, what goes in there. So uh, yeah, that's about all there is to the tailstock. All right, so here is the tool post. It has two dovetail mounts, one on this side and one on this side. And the, tool can, the tools can do different things depending on which side you mount them to. Um, and the dovetail is just controlled by this lever you can see here. Sometimes you have to push this piece in to get the part to fit or the tool fit on there. Um, so just as an example here, we're going to use the uh, facing and turning tool. And on this side, it's for turning. Um, so like I was saying earlier, you can use this to adjust the height which you never want to trust that somebody um, hasn't already messed it up like I just did for the center, so you're going to want to have to center that. Um, so I'll show you how to do that in just a second here. But basically, put your tool on there, make sure it's set all the way down, and then you can uh, pull this back, just get a nice tug, and uh, that locks it in place, and you are ready to go. Okay, as a real basic introduction to the tools we can use in this machine, uh, I'm going to cover just three basic tools. This is the uh, turning and facing tool um, and it does both depending on which way you mount it whether it's uh, so say your part is like this if you have it mounted as such this is the turning side goes like that then if you have it mounted like this this is the facing side for this side of the piece um, and this little thing here will adjust the height or the center of the tool uh, which I'll show you a little later um, then we have the boring tool. Uh, it's mounted on the post li like this. So basically this is used for either more precise holes or larger holes than any drill bits would normally do. Uh, and of course this is the cutting side here. And then the last tool we have is the parting tool. And basically this is used to cut the, your finished piece off of uh, the rest of your stock. Alright, so for operation of the machine, uh, to, to start machining, uh, to, to activate the lathe on a low speed, you'll take this lever on the bottom here and you'll turn to the left. Uh, to put it at a high speed, you'll take the same lever and turn to the right. Before you do this, you want to make sure that the brake up here is in the off position. To move the tool post where you'll be machining your part, this right here moves the piece, the, the tool post, either right or left in the X direction. Uh, going counterclockwise, will take you to the left, clockwise will take you to the right. To move it in the Y direction, it's this piece right here. Uh, turn it clockwise to go into your part, and counterclockwise to go away from your part. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, since the, the part we cut off has a rough face right here, we're going to smooth that surface off by using the facing tool. First we're going to do is we're going to line up a dovetail on the tool post, slide it down, put the lever towards you, and that will lock it in place. So now this tool ain't going to go anywhere. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to get it kind of close up uh, in the X direction. And then uh, we're going to take about 0.05 off of that. 
in the X direction. That's about rule of thumb of how much you want to take off of a rough cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the tool out. I'm going to go on 0.05. I'm going to make my first cut. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some lubricant on this. I'm going to take some from the blue because it's aluminum. And I'm going to make the cut. That should give us a nice surface on that tool. So now what I'm going to do is, now that we've taken off uh, that much of the tool, we know that that's the very end of, of the part. So I'm going to zero in the X direction. And now when I make uh, more cuts with the facing tool, uh, it should be going in reference to that zero. Okay, right, so now we're going to drill a hole into our part. Uh, first you want to find the drill bit that you want to use to drill that hole and put it into the keyless chuck. Uh, put the drill bit inside and turn the chuck towards you, that will tighten it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to push the tailstock towards our part and push it towards and then we want to lock it into place. Uh, we'll pull this lever back here so that will lock the tailstock so now the tailstock can't move anywhere. So in order to, to drill you can spin this lever. Uh, spinning it away from you will move the, the drill bit towards your part. Once it's near that part you can zero uh, this scale right here, and then every revolution of the wheel will take you in 0.1 inches. Uh, so after you're done drilling, your part will be covered in uh, bits, or your drill bit will be covered with bits from your part. So I'll just take the compressed air and blow it right off. It should be good to go. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, zero the turning tool uh, with the part that we're going to cut. So first we're going to zero in the x direction. Oh, that's pretty easy. You just turn it in the minus x direction until you get to your part. And once you start to see contact, you know to hit uh, the x zero button. Zeroing it in the y direction is a little more difficult. What we'll do is we'll actually turn the part on. I prefer turning it on low. And I'll slowly line up or move the, uh, the tool towards the part in the y direction. And eventually you'll start to hear, or maybe even see, that you're touching the part. And that's when you know that you need to zero it. So as you can see right there, I'm starting to, to touch the part. So now I'll zero it in the Y direction. And we know how much of the diameter or radius we'll be taking off, and how far along the part will be moving. Alright, so right now we're going to take a little bit off the outer diameter of our part. Um, general rules to take off 0.05 with uh, just a single pass. Um, if you're going to do a finishing cut, you take off 0.01. It'll give you a smoother surface. Uh, so right now I'm going to turn the tool on high. And I'm going to move in the negative x direction to take off some of our part. So right now I've taken off just over half an inch um, of the part. Now I'm going to back it out in the Y direction and reset it back in the X direction. This will give a better surface. Now I'm going to turn it off. Okay, so after making that cut, 
I've re-zeroed the tool so that now that's the new uh, surface that we're referencing from. Uh, now we're going to make a finishing cut. We're going to go in 0 0.01 to make our finishing cut. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the tool. What we're going to do this time is we're going to use the carriage feed. This will automatically move the tool towards our part and we'll make a nice even cut. So the first I'll do is I'll pull uh, the X, turn the carriage feed on for the X direction. This will make it go either this direction or that direction. So now the carriage feed is on. To activate the controls, we want to go in the left direction. We'll start at a low speed so that we don't shoot towards the chuck. Make sure when you're using the carriage feed that you do not hit the spindle of the chuck. Just forget turn. The button's kind of messed up, so you got to be careful with it. Now it's going in the right direction. Oh. Uh, so what we can do is we can control the speed. We'll turn it up a little bit. As you can see, we're almost to the zero reference in the X direction. Let's turn the speed a little bit so that we get there faster. Then once we start coming, I'll turn it down to a lower speed. All right, now we're cutting the tool. And it's moving at a constant speed through the, through the part. So like earlier, we cut to point, uh, five inches. So when we're getting near there, we'll just turn this off and that'll stop the carriage feed. Then again, you can zero in the Y direction, so that's your new reference, surface reference. You back out in the Y direction, then you can back up in the X direction. So this is the parting tool. We're going to use this to remove uh, the parting machine from the rest of the stock. First what we'll do is we'll zero in the X direction by moving the parting tool up into our part. Okay, so after we zeroed it at the edge of our part, we're going to move it in the negative X direction by 0.1 inches. That makes up for the thickness of the parting tool. So what we want to keep is on the right side of uh, this, this part we're cutting. So we'll zero it at 0.1 inches. That now makes up for the thickness of the tool. So what we cut off will be that, that amount uh, instead of less the, the tool width. I guess now what we're going to do is we're going to cut the part off. Um, first we want to line it up close in the Y direction. What we're going to use for this one is we're going to use the carriage feed so that we can be constantly applying lube so that the, uh, the part doesn't get too hot. So what I'll do is first I'm going to turn on the part. I'm going to apply a little bit of lubrication to the part. And I'm going to turn on the carriage feed. Speed up a little bit so we can get close to the tool. Now we're on the tool and it's cutting off. Constantly apply lubrication. Now it's off. Okay, so this is the part that we uh, just uh, took away using the parting piece. Um, as you can see, the hole we drilled. And what happened to on the other side was it created this. You can, uh, you can use the facing tool to remove this if you want to later. Um, one of the things is you might have burrs on your piece. Obviously, this isn't the part that we're going to want to use anymore since it's just the remaining stock. But right now, we'll show you how to remove burrs from, from something that's still in. So we'll, we'll turn it on low. Keep it on low just in case because you're, you're going to be putting your hands in there. You don't want it on high. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold the file. Hold it loosely. Uh, you don't want this thing catching and you don't want it to, to go right into you or really just ruin your day. Uh, bring the file close to your part and just you know, gently allow the, the part to turn on the file to remove any, any burrs that there might be on your, on your piece. All right, so that should cover the basics of the uh, lathe here. Uh, what we didn't cover is going using the boring tool. 
Um, again, use this if you need to drill a more precise hole than a drill bit can get you, or a larger hole than a drill bit can get you. Um, pretty simple to use. Just use the tool post. Um, yeah. But um, what we also didn't cover was facing the, your final piece once you um, part the piece. Um, so if you do want to face it, you're going to have to leave some extra material, maybe like 0.03 inches or something like that, so that you can uh, go ahead and reinsert it into the chuck or uh, call it and uh, go ahead and face up. But other than that, that should cover everything you really need to know about this tool for basic use. Oh, and also, don't forget to clean up.